Off the Hook, airing on OffTheHookSports.com. Your home for real news, real opinions, and what really matters about Tennessee athletics. The Off the Hook podcast at OffTheHookSports.com or Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or wherever you go for your favorite podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, iHeart. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Off the Hook with Dave Hooker starts now. And welcome to the Vol Report. She is Amanda LaPrada in for John Adams. I'm Dave Hooker and sponsored by Big Orange Phillies and Vols Automotive Group. I'll tell you more about them. First, I want to remind you to like and subscribe. Be a part of our community as we continue to grow with Big Orange Phillies. And of course, Vols Automotive Group. Like and subscribe so you'll get more videos. So coming up on the program today, a special Sunday version, depending on when you're listening, is right after Tennessee wrapped up its second scrimmage and essentially the halfway point of preseason camp. And so we're going to talk some running backs. We're going to talk about what Josh Heupel had to say after the scrimmage. Also, coming up, we are going to talk about the three teams in the top 25 that Amanda says no question, no question that Tennessee would be. Tennessee is not in the top 25, 28 to tabulate the votes afterwards. And... Coming up on the program today, uh, we're going to take a look at Nico Iamuleva, who had a pretty good game over the weekend and has announced that he will enroll midterm. Amanda LaFrada, how are you, ma'am? I'm doing well, Dave, on this very nice Sunday. NASCAR is starting, so I am ready, I'm ready to go. I tell you where that you can get a fantastic car as well as automotive group right there on Callahan. It's all about integrity. So... Let me get to right off the top what Josh Heupel had to say before I tell you about the Big Orange Phillies event that is awesome. So here's basically what Josh Heupel had to say after his press conference in the scrimmage on Sunday. And I want to address a couple of points. Now, one, I've covered coaching staffs that absolutely never put a timetable in anything, Amanda. In Josh Heupel's case, they did. They said they wanted to have an idea of their offensive line and who they would be after the second scrimmage. Well, they haven't seen the tape yet, so technically they're still on schedule. But he did confirm that Darnell Wright is definitely going to stay on the right side at tackle, which makes me Should think... be easy to remember. Right on right, yeah. It's mm-hmm. too bad the other guy's name's not left. So, But it makes me think that, Amanda, it does make me believe that they like what they see at that left tackle position so i think as far as what we've heard from josh heupel and what we did hear that he's going to play both of the guys that are vying for that position at left tackle and i don't think he's completely sure who's going to be the end all be all starter but jeremiah crawford is the senior and then sophomore gerald mincy is the sophomore so i think it's a good sign amanda that tennessee has seen enough out of that pair that they can keep right at right tackle yeah absolutely if you if you need someone at a specific position and it's not so much um it's not so much that they can't play that they they can play both but you're deciding to stick them at one position that means they're very good at that particular position and that you have other people who can fill the the other side so if he's your obvious right hand man and you need people to move to the left side or to fill that left side then it's very good that you have this guy who's able to do both. Yep. And then as far as the running backs, that's something that we wanted to touch base on. You know, a lot of talk about Justin Williams Thomas coming out of camp, Amanda, when it first started and the maturity level. And we were both blown away by the way he held himself at a press conference setting, but he's kind of faded a little bit. It looks like uh, it's not unusual, but, Looks like Jabari Small is going to be their go-to guy, which is kind of what we thought in the beginning all along. Well, you have a veteran guy who's been on the team for for a minute, and you have a freshman. So, of course, you're going to have that veteran be able to step up, take leadership, um, and be the one that you need to count on because he knows he knows how the game is played. You have an incoming freshman um, who who does not. Williams Thomas, this is all brand new to him. You know, he hasn't even started classes yet. So this is all just, it's a new a new feeling. It's a new thing for him. He needs to take a while to get acclimated. So to, to try to put, you know, more on his shoulders than he's able to handle, I think it's a good, 
it's a good look that Small is emerging as the leader of that backfield. Agreed. He is coming up big is Jabari Small. Jabari Davis will come up big at Big Orange Phillies on – that's the best transition ever. Kind of just stopped myself and cut that. Yeah, August the 21st at Big Orange Phillies. You're going to love it. Princeton fans going to be there. Latrell Bumpus is going to be there. They play for the Vols right now, and former Vol running back Jabari Davis will be there, and it's going to be awesome. So they've got free autographed posters to give away, food and drink specials. I'll be there, so it's going to be a really good time on August the 21st, Sunday, August the 21st, from 1 to 3.30. So, again, I want to remind you to like and subscribe this video if you find us entertaining because we want to be a part of your day we air each and every day at 8 30 a.m streaming live and all kinds of videos off the hooksports.com but amanda when we talk about the teams that tennessee should be able to beat you've got three in particular so i want to throw in these practice notes from the second scrimmage really quick and then uh, we'll move on to those three teams that you think tennessee w- would definitely be able to beat in the top 25. So, uh, Amanda, a couple of quick notes. The defensive backfield, I've been told that, well, Josh Hopple's press conference, I was told he did say it, um, is doing a better job on the back end of some tackling in space. They have more depth there. Did give up a couple of sacks in the second scrimmage, uh, which I think is very concerning, especially when you have Hendon Hooker, a Heisman candidate, and you have a guy that's all a uh, preseason SEC up front. I don't think you want to get him hurt. Might be why Justin Williams Thomas isn't in there. And then just as far we mentioned the offensive line, it's it's a team that's coming together, and I think it's a, a team that's on schedule. Who will they beat? Amanda, I don't know, but three teams in the top 25 that you pointed out, there are three teams in the top 25 you think Tennessee would handle with ease. Is that too strong of a word? I don't think it's too – it's a little strong of the word of, of a word. I don't think ease is quite what I would say, but I believe nine times out of ten that Tennessee is better, will be better in a head-to-head matchup against these teams, and should be ranked higher than them. So, who are the teams? I'm ready. Unveil them. All right. So, at number sixteen, you have Pitt, and I know Tennessee goes up against Pitt and is right now a four and a half point favorite over Pitt. Yet. Pitt is still ranked higher than Tennessee is. And I, I'm not exactly sure why, considering the biggest thing for Pitt was. Well, no, you're right. I, I looked at that, too, and I was like, why is Pitt ran- – I know they won last year, but the rosters are complete. I, I said the same thing. I was like, am I looking at the wrong year? There, No, you're. it seems like you should be, but you're not. The rosters are completely different from last year to this year. And you're losing two major, major key factors in your offense. And you had a Heisman uh, finalist in Kenny Pickett. He's gone. He's in the NFL now. Um, You had the, or they had the wide receiver, their number one wide receiver that won uh, the, what is it? The Litnikoff Award. Thank you. I'm old. I I remember seeing Fred Bolitnikoff. So, yes. Yes. In Addison, and he's gone. He transferred out to USC, and you and the only the replacements they have for Pickett is a USC transfer. I guess him and Addison just switched. Yeah. But you have a USC transfer that's coming in, and you have um, a guy that broke his collarbone last season. So those are your those are your choices for quarterback. And then you Pitt lost their offensive coordinator. So the offensive coordinator pieced out. So literally everything that made Pitt as good as they were on offense is gone. They're gone. And it makes no sense to have them at 16 because we all know that they're not known for their defense. I'm I'm totally with you. That surprised me. Who are the other two teams in the top 25 that you think Tennessee would beat if there were a game held tomorrow? Just for us, we, we're the only ones in attendance. We just get to watch a game. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> love it. So <laughs> at number 18 is Texas, which is a little premature, I believe. They're coming off a five and seven season. Yes, they got Arch Manning, but he's not coming in until 2023. Not. So I'm not exactly sure why they're ranked there. 
They were also at the bottom of the Big 12 in defense last season, and they were ranked 100th overall in their defense. There, there's not much upside there. There's not much upside. There's a transfer quarterback, a freshman transfer um, QB that's coming in, and Quinn Ewer, Ewers, Ewers. Ewer. I don't know how you say his name, but he was at Ohio State for four months before he left. Like he went for four months and then and peaced out and came to Texas. So I don't know how well he, he will do at, at Texas, but I don't see a reason for them being 18th in the nation. Not this year. Like, wait, maybe when Arch is there, but especially not right now. This seems really far-fetched. No, they had a losing record last year, which is hard to do at Texas. So uh, one last team, and then we want to give you an update on Nico Iaomaleva. So if, if we can, there was a third team you said in the top 25 that Tennessee would definitely beat. Yeah. Also, with Texas, they're facing Alabama, like, next season. So. Right. I, I don't get it. Anyway. So the third one is Ole Miss. And we all know the the mustard bottle, the golf ball. The coach, Ole Miss. I can't even remember. No one, no one knows. No one can. Yeah. Um, it's like, well, I'm, uh, rhymes with train, maybe something like that. Joey Freshwater. Yeah, Joey Freshwater. That's very good. Okay, something like that. But yes, anyway, Kiffin's there, um, and he's a great offensive mind. We know that. Um, but aside from that, I mean, he's gone after players in the transfer portal because we know that he doesn't have quite the facilities and everything that is needed to compete in the NIL especially not at Ole Miss in the SEC. And so he's bringing in a whole new offense. And the four starters that he did have, they're all going to be playing different positions. So it, yeah. it's difficult for me to to understand why they're ranked as high as they are, especially in the SEC you know, West, where they will be facing in Alabama, they'll be facing an LSU with Brian Kelly. I mean, it's it's a difficult, it's, I think that's the more difficult side of the SEC to compete in. So, you know, Amanda, I've always thought that Lane Kiffin would be higher in the AP poll because he does keep up connections with the media members in the Associated Press. I've always thought that he would be higher in the AP poll and not the coaches poll, because I think coaches probably don't like him very much. Um, but um, maybe they do. Maybe the sports information directors that are filling out the tabulation do like him. I want to remind you to get to Big Orange Phillies. Big Orange Phillies has the big football season kickoff meet and greet. That'll be August the 21st on Sunday. Former Vol Jabari Davis there, Latrell Bumpus, Princeton Fant are current Vols and very good. So you need to get down there for free autograph posters, food, and drink specials. Big Orange Philly, Sunday, August the 21st. That's where you need to be. It's on Mandeville Pike in the heart of Halls. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying this video so we can bring you more. And then did want to mention Nico Iaomuleva who had a fantastic um, night in uh, over the weekend and as they get ramped up out in Long Beach Polytech. But the news that we all were expecting was not a great surprise that he will enroll at midterm and be with the balls in January. So, uh, Amanda, I thought the really easy thing when Nico Iaomuleva, so those that don't know, he's a five-star a quarterback, he's the highest rated player that Tennessee's ever landed since they had recruiting rankings in roughly the late 90s, 2000, right in there. But, I mean, I think it's really interesting that he is compared a lot to Peyton Manning and the impact that Peyton Manning had on the program. I, I completely disagree. I think it's Heath Shuler. And I, I, here's why. Because I know I'm going to sound old. I'm going before your time. I'm going prehistoric days. But in the 80s, they had guys like uh, you know, Pat Ryan and Andy Kelly. And Ryan played a long time in the NFL, and Andy Kelly is the all-time leader for indoor yardage in uh, an indoor football league. So, But they were both good. Heath Shuler was an elite talent, and Heath Shuler was also athletic, like Nico Iaomaleva, so he could make things happen with his legs. Now, I don't know this about Nico, but Heath Shuler was also a little rough around the edges. He needed coaching. 
So when David Cutcliffe sunk his claws into him and made him the third pick in the NFL draft, then I think Peyton Manning took notice. So as far as a transformative player, I don't think Peyton Manning happens necessarily if Heath Shuler doesn't happen. I think the comparison between Nico Iamuleva and Heath Shuler makes a lot more sense than Manning and Nico. And I'm not knocking Manning at all. I just I think it, it seems a lot more comparable. You? I mean, I think you're right on that. It's, you know, it's more than just their style of play. And it's, it's more than, I feel like a lot of people get hung up on Peyton Manning, especially at UT. And, and he was great. Don't get me wrong. Great for the school. Great for the program. You know, great quarterback did, did a lot of big things, but they almost forget who came before him. And it's like, that is just completely white. It's, it's Peyton and no one else. And I, I agree with your assessment more of Heath Schuler being, or Nico being like Heath Schuler than he is like Peyton. Peyton was never known for his legs. I mean, he was never and, known for it. No. And, and I'm sorry, Pat, Pat Ryan. I'm sorry, Andy, Andy Kelly, but you had to go back to the seventies with Condridge Holloway to find an elite quarterback. And I do believe he would have played in today's NFL. He was mobile, but a lot of times African-American quarterbacks didn't get the chance back then. And it's a different style of play, but just the way the whole backdrop is, it, it, it makes it feel, and Tennessee also was uber talented when Peyton got there. I mean, th they had plenty of talent. Now they were talented when Heath was there too, but they were also a program that was on the rise, which I think this Tennessee program is. Anyway, it, it feels a lot more Schuler than Manning to me personally. Big Orange Phillies, August the 21st. That's where they'll be with Princeton Fant, Latrell Bumpus, former Ball Jabari Davis as well. Free autograph posters, food and drink specials. Right there at 6625 Maynardville Pike. It's very easy to find. Great for North Knoxville. And also, Viles Automotive Group, it's all about integrity right there in Callahan. They want to be your go-to dealer in Knoxville because of integrity. They want, they need, and they appreciate your business. So we'll be with you each and every weekday at 8.30. Check us out on our YouTube page. Check us out on offthehooksports.com for coverage of the Vols. So again, the Vol Report with Amanda LaFrada in for John Adams, brought to you by Big Orange Phillies. And our friends at Files Automotive Group. This has been a production of Off Thug Sports.